I know I memed a lot during the keynote reaction, and there was a lot of good cringe in that Samsung event, and before you think I'm just a pessimistic Apple sheep, wait until iPhone sees it. That's when I really start complaining, and that's when I'm really angry about my complaints because I know I'm buying those products, and I still have to put up with all the crappy, cringy keynotes. But overall, I am somewhat happy for the Galaxy Z Fold 3, and I thought I'd share my overall opinion since there's probably gonna be a lot of y'all asking. Let's begin. So after digesting a lot of this news today, I thought it would be fun to first talk about the Z Flip 2 because this is where we've seen a quite significant price drop. Sure, it's 128 gigs by default, but this is the first time Samsung is making a foldable that is launching sub $1,000. They're coming up on that incredibly competitive launch price of the Pablo Escobar. And I honestly think because they're improving the durability, which I'm happy about, and they've given these phones water resistance, not dust resistance, but still IPX8 water resistance, and now they've got the price down, 128 gigs of storage, in my opinion, is fine for a $1,000 starting price, but this is $400 cheaper than the last Z Flip, and they gave it stereo speakers, which was a big problem for me, and they increased the size of the external cover display. So there's a lot of great improvements here. It doesn't have S Pen support, but I don't think people buying the Z Flip wanted it anyway. And the overarching theme I'm seeing with Samsung's foldables is that they're getting better, and I think that makes the foldable market very excited for them, but but I'm not sure that the Z Flip 2 is going to convince people that were not previously interested in foldables. You know, I'm not sure if there's a ton of people out there that said $1,400, that's too much, but $1,000 I can swing. I'm not sure if the water resistance is going to convince enough people or 120 hertz on that interior display now. Because frankly, I think the Z Flip is a regular smartphone that can fold and that frankly doesn't add a lot of functionality or features to the device aside from flex mode. So it's kind of nice to be able to prop up the camera so you can set it down somewhere but it's kind of top heavy and it's probably much cheaper to just get you know a tripod or a pop socket or something there's other ways to prop up a camera is all i'm trying to say but overall i think it's safe to say durability is no longer the problem with foldables there may be a slight crease in there and the display might feel a bit less premium because it's covered in plastic so there's feeling complaints that i can understand after reviewing both the z flip and the z fold but overall durability is not the problem and I don't think that's going to steer people away from foldables thinking oh no this is gonna break or the hinge is gonna malfunction it was really bad with the original fold and they had to delay the release for that but with the Z flip Samsung is giving less and less downsides to foldables to now we get to focus more on what are the advantages and what does this help you do and the fact that they emphasized at this keynote so much that you don't even have to open the flip for a lot of things and you can just use the exterior display that to me is kind of evidence of like well on our normal phones we don't have to make that decision do you want to use the cover display or do you want to take the extra effort to unfold it do you want to reply to texts or check some notifications from that exterior display or use it as a selfie viewfinder or do you want to just live with a regular phone that could probably you know there's some s21 fan edition that has all of these specs and probably even better cameras with better battery life for far cheaper i'm not even trying to sway you guys to iphone i'm just saying there's cheaper ways to get a phone if it doesn't have a hinge and is folding a phone in half and making it, you know, pretty thick and not really saving much on weight, but saving a bit on dimension so that it fits in your back pocket easier, is that worth the extra compromises of the noticeable feeling of the crease, the plastic display feel, and having to make the decision every time you take your phone out of your pocket, do I unfold it or do I leave it folded up? Do I use the extra display or do I use the internal display? It's options, which Samsung is really good at, and they want to demonstrate, okay, we have a phone for everybody, but... Some Sometimes I think people don't want more options. They just want something to work and every time they take their phone out of their pocket They don't want to have to make a decision about whether or not the notification or the command is worthy of Flipping the phone open or not so sure There's some people out there that love the flip because it folds and that's impressive to them Or they like one specific feature like flex mode for some reason But overall, I don't think that people who saw no point in getting that before are going to be convinced because even when foldable have no compromises now, which is what the Z Flip 2 is getting us close to. The price point's not that high anymore, the durability isn't that much of a problem, the cameras are still good, the display's still high quality, we've got stereo speakers now, we got water resistance, there's not really any compromises to get it, so if this doesn't sell super well, can we admit that the vast majority of consumers don't really see a point in buying a flippable phone because they don't really see that as a feature advantage? I still believe that foldables are going to 
stick around. I don't think they're a temporary fad. I just think that overall, they're going to be a niche of the market just like the Galaxy Note was. It wasn't becoming a standard thing for all phones to have S pens or, you know, stylus that was built into them, but some people liked that feature. Some people were willing to prioritize that and buy devices that had it. And I think it's the same thing with foldables. It's like some people like having a flipping phone because it's cool to show off to people and you can flex literally on others to be like, hey, look, my phone folds in half when I hang up on phone calls and that's so much more satisfying. And then your friends go, okay, yeah, that, that's great. Good for you. And then go back to using normal phones, which there's really, really good phones now that are getting tremendously cheaper from Samsung and Google. And I think that the lack of compromises with these phones is probably going to be evident that a lot of people just don't see much value in a phone that folds. Us in the tech community? Oh yeah, it's super interesting. We love talking about this stuff. It gets us excited. And I've said on the record many times now, I would love for Apple to make a foldable. Probably one more like the Galaxy Z Fold, which I think is a better implementation because you at least have a idea that you can take a larger size display, fold it up and put it in your pocket, use it like a normal phone when it's folded, use it like a tablet when unfolded. And I enjoyed the hardware on my Z Fold 2 and I had no complaints with the durability. Now that it's water resistant, that's amazing. And now that they've got the camera underneath the display, but you can still kind of see the pixels. It's just kind of interesting that Samsung found this middle step between, okay, we removed the punch hole camera, but it's not quite completely underneath the display because it's still pixelated and there's a lot of algorithms that have to try to fix the photos and videos that you take from that camera. So it's interesting. Don't get me wrong. And us in the tech community, we love talking about all this stuff, but still it's been three years now that we've had foldable phones and we've basically got the price down a couple hundred bucks when it comes to that full size fold, you know, tablet experience that fits in your pocket. We've had them for several years and we saw the price go from 1980 to 2000 to now 1800, which is still really good. It's an improvement and the price is dropping, but I don't think it's getting anywhere near the main problem that I think foldables like the Z Fold still suffer from, which is that people would much rather just buy a tablet and a phone separately. And both of those devices are going to be better than any combo of setups that the Z Fold can offer. It's cool that you can just do it all in one package, but the compromises are still there when it comes to it's a 7.6 inch internal display, which is big for a smartphone, but pretty tiny for a tablet. And frankly, my biggest issue with the Z Fold 2 was the software not really taking advantage of that full size display. And Samsung's One UI 3 was not really persuading me that this was going to be much better. It still feels kind of cluttered and trying to minimize tabs into little corners. And now we have apps on the side and on the bottom at all times that you can use like a dock. But would you spend, you know, $900 on a 7.6 inch tablet? And would you spend $900 on a long skinny TV remote phone? No. So just because those two crappy non-existent products are combined into one, I don't think that's a good enough sale for a lot of people. But don't get me wrong, it's still really interesting. It's still really amazing to see what companies are capable of producing. And now that we have 120 hertz on the outside display and inside, the fact that you can take a pocketable device with you with that many cameras and that many displays, it's really fun to talk about. It's really fun to show your friends. And I really enjoyed reviewing the Z Fold, despite not really missing it as soon as I put it back in the box and said goodbye. Yet simultaneously, if some of you out there are thinking, this Apple sheep is just jealous that Apple doesn't have an option. Heck yes, I am. I'm not really ingrained into the Galaxy ecosystem because I have yet to find something in Samsung's world that could compete with, you know, the M1 chip and Apple Silicon and the Pro Class software that I utilize on my Mac. And I love my iPad Pro and Android on tablets is just not really there yet for me. So I can't integrate the Z Fold into my ecosystem, but if Apple was making even a far more expensive foldable that ran iPadOS when unfolded and iOS when folded up, yeah, I would be super duper interested in that because I could actually pair it to my Apple Watch and it would work with my other products in the ecosystem really well. So yes, I'll admit it. I'm jealous. I wish Apple was making these types of products and is it worth switching my entire ecosystem of products just so that I can try out the Z Fold 3? No, that's going to put too many bumps in the road and it would probably probably slow down my whole editing workflow, which is what I need to do for work. So I'm primarily jealous of people that can get the Samsung ecosystem working for them and are comfortable with One UI and Android as a whole, because now you have more options that I don't have access to. So I still think they're cool. I still think it would be really interesting if Apple tried to make one, because I think they would get software and probably the aspect ratios of the Fold better than Samsung could. But Samsung always has been and probably always will be an absolute king of crazy hardware.
hardware. Ever since Galaxy S8 or Galaxy S10 days, I've been praising the hardware and been saying how impressive it is, and that's not changing today. I'm still really impressed with what their hardware team can come up with, but in regards to how it impacts the rest of the ecosystem compared to Apple's versus how their software takes advantage of their hardware, I'm still left wanting more, and that's why I'm not willing to switch. But overall, I do find it incredibly impressive, and I don't really see the point in buying one to review because most of my criticisms from the Z Fold 2 are probably still going to apply to the Z Fold 3. But for those who do care about foldables and are convinced by them, you have better options now. You have cheaper options now, which I'm excited for you. I have nothing to gain by criticizing that preference that you guys have. But at the end of the day, I don't think these are going to be anywhere close to Samsung's best sellers. And I don't see the smartphone market moving towards spending comfortably over a thousand dollars on each phone, unless it's an iPhone, because people just know that's going to hold its resale value better. That's going to have six to seven years of software support, maybe more. And for this demographic, people would much rather spend their money on an iPhone, an iPad, and an Apple Watch and AirPods than they would, you know, drop $1,800 on one product that's probably not going to get updates after three or four years. Feel free to let me know how you feel on the Z Fold 3, Z Flip 2. Are you guys picking one up? I know a lot of people that buy them, but I don't know a ton of people that turn them into their daily driver and they don't have like a backup phone ready to go at any time. So prove me wrong. How many of you out there are getting this as your sole phone and that's all you're going to be using? This is your Alp Sheep here. See you guys in the next one.